Hey guys, this is Mr. Flanagan. Um, I'm trying this for the first time, so bear with me if there's any hiccups, but I think it's going to work out. So we're going to jump right into uh, kind of a recap of the shifters of aggregate demand. Again, anything that would shift or change, I should say, GDP, either increase or decrease, C, I, G, or X, N, that is going to shift aggregate demand. So again, any time in economics on any graph, an increase is represented by a shift to the right, a decrease is represented by a shift to the left. So I'll show us a shift in AD um, a bit later, but for now, let's jump into aggregate supply. If you want to look back at AD, take a look back at your notes from before break. So shifting aggregate supply. Again, we have two different curves. We have SIRAS, the short run aggregate supply, and we have LURAS, the long run aggregate supply. So we're gonna take a look at SIRAS first. Now we call them short run aggregate supply. The shifters for these are things that can fluctuate often or that they can change fairly frequently. So the first one, like you see here, is wage rates or what you pay your workers, or for example, minimum wage. So just like old school supply, if wages increase, if minimum wage increases, then businesses have to pay their workers more money, which means that business is spending more on labor and less on buying resources or actually producing the product. So if wages increase, aggregate supply would shift to the left. So on this graph from AS to AS2, a left being a decrease, because again, if you're paying your workers more money, you can produce fewer goods and services because you're putting more of your resources, in this case, your money into labor. And the same thing works on the opposite side. If wages decrease, you can produce more goods and services, which would shift AS short run aggregate supply to the right, because if you're paying your workers less, you can buy more natural resources and put more money into the production of the goods and services. The second thing that can shift SIRAS short run again, because it fluctuates often, is the price of inputs or resources. Oil or energy, sometimes even land, those are the most common um, examples that you might see on a test or on the AP test. And again, prices can change. Prices of oil change all the time. So again, that's why it is a short run SIRAS shifter. And just like old school supply, if the price of a resource, let's say, goes down, it's cheaper to buy oil, then a company can buy oil at a lower price and it can produce more goods than it could before. So we would say if the price of an input or resource decreases, then SIRAS would shift to the right. So on this graph from AS to AS1. The two less common shifters of SIRAS are business only taxes. Uh, so again, if taxes increase on businesses, that means businesses are giving more money to the government and they are not you know, keeping that money for the production of their good or service. So if business only taxes increase, businesses can produce fewer goods and services because more of their money is going to the government. So we would see a shift like on this graph over here from AS to AS2. Now it's specific business only taxes because if it says just taxes change, we could assume that that means taxes for everybody which would relate to consumption. So that would be an aggregate demand issue, not an aggregate or short run aggregate supply issue. The last one again, really uh, sums up for us why these are short run or SIRAS shifters, just because the environment or weather conditions, those can change fairly frequently. Think about a storm, a temporary seasonal storm, something like that, destroying an orange farmer's crop. So that negatively affects a leftward shift, I should say, of aggregate supply. Um, just as a small scale example, if a storm hits, um, it could affect you know, crop production that affects the entire country. Uh, but next season, there might not be that storm. So that's why it is short run. And again, business only taxes, wages, and the price of inputs or resources all of those can change fairly frequently. They can fluctuate or change fairly often. So that's why they shift the short run aggregate supply curve. Now, LORAS, the totally vertical element of aggregate supply, these are called long run 
shifters because they do not necessarily fluctuate often and they have sort of a long-term impact on production. And now these shifters for LORAS, long run aggregate, are the same as the shifters for the PPC. So if there's a change, a newer or better technology, that means we can produce more things now and in the long run. So LORAS would shift to the right because of that better technology that's available. Same thing, you know, it would be a decrease if for some reason we lost that technology. The second is the quantity or quality of resources. So finding more resources or finding better resources. Um, that could include discovering a new oil or coal resource. It could be, you know, the size of the labor force increasing due to immigration or something like that. Uh, the amount of capital stock, the amount of capital goods that are in an economy that, you know, capital goods being machines, tools, factories, things like that, that are used to create other goods or even having a better educated or more productive or better trained workforce will shift uh, LORAS to the right uh, if they are more educated and better trained because that training, that education does not go away. It's not like they go to the training and then two days later they go back to being worse workers. Um, that will stick with them and it will help increase the productivity of a country's economy in the long run. Again, just to clarify, the price of resources, that is not a shifter of LORAS because prices of resources can change all of the time. But the education, the size of the workforce, the capital stock, the technology, that does not fluctuate as often and those have a much more long-term impact on aggregate supply. So we'll come back to this in just a minute when I'll show you a couple examples of shifting. Um, but when we are shifting aggregate supply, if you are shifting SIRAS, they give you a SIRAS shifter, you're only going to shift SIRAS, that horizontal and intermediate range shape. Um, but when you shift LORAS, it gets a little more funky. So I'll save that uh, for a little bit later. So just like old school supply and demand, we have equilibrium in the ADAS model. So that sort of happy place for an economy. Now we're looking at economic big picture, not just for one particular product. So this graph you've already seen on your notes, um, but now we'll break it down into terms of what it means. So on an AP test, they might just ask you to graph ADAS at equilibrium, at long run equilibrium, or at full employment. This graph represents any of those kind of phrases, equilibrium, long run equilibrium, or full employment. Now, what this graph shows us is our economic happy place is where LORAS, SIRAS, and aggregate demand all intersect. So we label this our dashed lines. This would be the price level at equilibrium. If we follow LORAS all the way down, YF, that is real GDP, Y representing real GDP, at full employment. So when we have approximately four to five percent unemployment everybody else who wants to be working is working or who wants to be and is able to work is working this is the maximum possible production that we have so that's why it's real gdp at full employment and what this can show us is if something shifts if one of these curves shift it can show us inflation if price level increases deflation if price level decreases and then it can also show us what happens to unemployment and we'll get back to that in just a bit when we see some actual shifts happening. So again, long run equilibrium on this graph is where all three of the curves intersect. If there's ever a graph shown or you're asked to draw a graph where all three do not meet somewhere, then we are not at long run equilibrium and we wanna try and figure out what can get us back to long run equilibrium. So the next couple of graphs that we're gonna look at are going to show economic problems, either inflation, recession, or even a depression. And then we're going to look at where is our short run equilibrium, and then what can governments or economies do to try and get back to this long run happy place where all three curves intersect. So that will be in the next part of this video because I get cut off in 10 minute chunks. So take a look at the next video that's posted, and I'll see you in a second.